Hey everybody, this is Jeremy from Gadgetel, and today I want to show you the Android 4.2 update running on my 8GB Nexus 7. Uh, this update is not currently rolling out to Nexus 7 devices over the air, but it should be within the next few days or so. And if you know how to root your device and download the uh, update from Google directly and install it by flashing it or through another means, uh, you can do that as well. But this video is not to show how to do that. This video is just here to show you the new features that you can expect when this update hits you very soon. So let's get started. I'm going to turn it on. The first thing that you see here is that lock screen is different. Lock screen is very different. A few different things about this lock screen. One is this clock. It looks very, very different. A clock that is uh, not present in any other version of Android be, uh, below 4.2. And you see right here it says King of the Nexus, which is something that I put in there. And I'll show you how I did that in a minute. And another thing, lock screen widgets. So if you move over to the right, you'll see that there's widgets for your email. And there's another spot that you can uh, place a widget for your calendar. Uh, you can put your other Gmail account there if you want. And there is another lock screen widget for sound search. So far there's only four. Uh, there are no more, but possibly maybe there'll be some more lock screen widgets in the future and you have enough space to put three of them on your screen. So that's one, two, and three. So quick access to those uh, three apps right from your home screen. Uh, another difference here is down at the bottom there's multi-user support uh, for your tablets. So I'm just going to uh, first start with my account and I'm going to show you how to make a second account and what that all entails. So let's just go ahead and unlock it. So basically uh, the way that I got this was that for the first time ever I rooted this thing this morning I found out after a long time how to uh, how to flash this update to my device and then when it did that it broke root I probably could have stopped that but I decided not to so this is a completely stock uh, version of Android with no rooting or anything like that um, and for the most part it looks exactly the same right you know you got the same number of home screens you know nothing nothing different here but there are some changes let's look at the notifications bar you can just slide all the way down if you want and when you let it go it kind of stops about uh, let's say about two-thirds of the way down and that's because it gives your notifications especially your expandable notifications uh, more room I don't have any notifications here now but if I did I would be able to expand them so if I had like multiple emails or multiple uh, expandable notifications they can go all the way down there whereas in the previous update you only had a little bit of space to do that so that's one function that you can have when you swipe down so basically anywhere from the middle to the left when you swipe down is your notifications bar but if you swipe down farther to the right you will see quick settings options so there's me right there is telling you what user is currently logged into this device you can also change your brightness and you can change you can go right into your settings your battery indicator uh, set up auto rotate your Wi-Fi connection, airplane mode, and Bluetooth. So there's really no need to have a widget somewhere on your home screen to uh, access these things because it's all right here. I'm going to show you that again. From basically from the middle to the left, all regular notifications. Start a little bit over to the right, and then there are your quick settings right there. So let's just go into the settings menu. Uh, let's scroll down, and I'm going to show you that this is Android 4.2 you see right there Android 4.2 set this back down and it's also to my understanding that Google changed how you uh, access uh, developer settings so uh, I think that the way that you do that now is that you have to continuously tap away and then it says now you're a developer and then that that unlocks your uh, your developer settings 
So that that's quite weird. It used to be easily accessible through uh, just through the regular uh, settings menu here, but it's not there anymore. So you have to tap on that several times, and then there's your develop your developer options. So I'm now a developer apparently. So what else is new in these settings? Well, it looks all the same, right? Yeah, it does, but there are some differences. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look. Let's start by going to display. You see that there's an option right here called daydream that wasn't there before. What is daydream exactly? Well, daydream is a screen setting that you can apply to your device uh, for when it's charging or when it's connected to a dock of some sort. So if you click on where to daydream, uh, let's just zoom in a little bit just for this instance. It says that you can daydream while you're docked, while you're charging, or either. So I decided that I'm going to daydream while this device is uh, charging. And you have a few different options here. So if you wanted to look at the clock while you're daydreaming, that's selected right now, you can just look at a little preview. And you see this is what's going to happen once you plug in your device. Instead of it staying on one of your home screens or whatever, it's going to start daydreaming. Um, other options that you have, you can do the... Uh, the bean finger we can just flick around all the jelly beans like that while it's charging another thing that you can do is just look at colors so oh, look at all the pretty nexus colors uh, you can look at news from google currents you can have a photo frame or, or photo table and when you go down to photo table you can choose where you want to pull your photos uh, from and these are just all the different places here so i pre-selected photos from e3 2010 so when I, if I want that to be my option while it's daydreaming, it's just going to randomly flick photos out of that album. This album is not on my Nexus 7. It's actually, I believe it's uh, inside Google Plus right now. So it's just pulling these photos from the cloud because I am connected to Wi-Fi. And also there's some setting menus for the clock here where you can have a digital clock or an analog clock and you can also set it up in night mode uh, for really really dark rooms so it can be really dim because the Nexus 7 even at its lowest brightness uh, sometimes if you wake up and you want to look at the screen even though it's down all the way it can tend to hurt your eyes you know just a little bit so another feature in here is multi user support so let's back all the way out of this and go down to users that's a new option so as you can see right here uh, there's me, Jeremy, and I am the primary user on this device. But if I wanted to, I can set up another user. You set up another user, so uh, just in case you have, um, it's like a, a little brother or sister or a family member or somebody who says, hey, uh, can I see your tablet? And you don't want to say no because you don't want to be mean, but at the same time, you don't want them to have access to all your apps, messing up your save games, looking at your photos you might not want them to see. So in order to fix that, you can go to add a user here and you can choose to give them their own account. And it's basically like giving them a clean slate. It's almost like you're giving them their own tablet. They have access to their own settings, their own apps. They can't touch any of your stuff. Uh, so that's what I did. I created a guest account. So when I want to access that, I'm just going to turn it off. Turn the Nexus 7 back on. And then you can just touch on which user you want to use. And depending on which one you have selected, the bubble will get a little bit bigger. And the background will change according to the settings. So when I unlock it, this it takes you right back to the home screen. But if it is your first time doing it, it'll take you through just the standard uh, Google Play and Google account set up. So Google asks you, what's your email address? Uh, you want to sign up for Google Plus? You know, and all that stuff. You know, just like if you were to take it out the box and set it up for the first time. So, I oh, didn't mean to go to YouTube. So, you can see the apps here are all stock with the exception of this app, this Super SU. That is a remnant from when I rooted this device. I have no idea how to get it off of there. I'll root it again eventually, but um, yeah, that won't come on here, but everything else will. So they're all, besides that, you know, stock Google apps, there's the widgets, all that stuff. Nothing from my main account is in 
the guest account. So if I did try to go to YouTube, it's not tied to anything. This is just random stuff that Google put up here. It's not, this is not a specific account or anything. It says sign in at the top. Same thing with everything else. So if you want to pass your tablet around to other people, you can set them up with their own account. They can have their own games, their own everything. You don't have to worry about them mucking with your stuff. And when you want to go back to your own private main account, you can do that. Start it back up and you'll start off right where you left off. So that's that's a very cool feature right, right there. So another uh, feature that's not necessarily uh, something that you need, but something that is you know kind of neat, is changes to Google Now. Well, not necessarily changes, more like uh, enhanced features. So let's just go to settings here. Go to Google Now. And Google Now, now, <laughs> uh, it can go into your Gmail and it can provide you with cards which are basically just like notifications uh, when you have packages so if you bought something from Amazon and you get a shipping notification from them if you allow Google now to look at that then it will tell you hey you got a package from Amazon coming a little bit later today from the confirmation notice and it also does the same thing for flights that you might book hotels that you book and restaurants that you set uh, that you set reservations for and hotels that you set reservate well I think I said that hotels and dinner reservations uh, restaurant reservations it reminds you of all that for a Wi-Fi only Nexus 7 that may not necessarily be too useful because if you're not carrying this around all the time it's not connected to a mobile network uh, you wouldn't get those notifications anyway but if you had a phone it'll be quite quite different because it'll always be on, always let you know. Speaking of phones, there is a new camera feature in Android 4.2, um, but unfortunately, it's not available on tablets. Uh, Photosphere, I believe, is what it is that is basically uh, lets you take photos and then look at them as if they're in Google Maps, which is pretty neat. But since the Nexus 7 does not have a rear camera, it does not come uh, with Android 4.2. For the Nexus 7. However, one thing that it does do is it brings filters. So, there's me, for example. If you click on this here, it brings up these Instagrammy filters. So I can do that and make myself look all important and you know emotional. And you can just scroll across like that if you want and apply different filters to your photos and you can also add frames to your photos you know all stuff that is not new but definitely was made popular uh, by Instagram you can crop the photo you can rotate it you can mirror it and then you can just change the basic photo uh, properties you can change the contrast if you want and I'll bring it all the way down and bring it all the way up change the contrast um, you can change the shadows, the sharpness, the curves, you know, just very basic photo editing stuff. Uh, definitely not something that you can't get elsewhere, but it is baked right into the OS now, so if that's something that you're into, you can totally do that. Uh, fortunately, no Photosphere. Uh, maybe there's a way to put it on the Nexus 7. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to, but uh, until someone actually figures that out, it makes it widely available for everyone, we are left wanting. Okay, so last but not least, I want to show you like the keyboard and let me just uh, go into my email here. I didn't want to give away anyone's email address. So basically Google add, added gesture typing. Gesture typing just like you see on, um, on a newer version of SwiftKey, um, the beta that I think is not quite out yet but it will be soon and something that was made popular by swipe and this is something that HTC uses as well so what you could do is simply swipe your fingers across the keyboard to make a statement so let me do this so I can say hi my name is Jeremy and I'm tired and there you go so basically it's just like swipe and you see it predicts the words as you go around 
So like, did you mean furnish? No. Did you mean Fushan? Yes, I absolutely meant that. So it's just gesture typing, uh, nothing, nothing really special. But it is nice that that feature is inside. So yeah, I think that that is the bulk of the features that is uh, available on Android 4.2 for the Nexus 7. Uh, pinch to Zoom Gmail was supposed to be in this, but for some reason I don't have Pinch to Zoom in my Gmail. Not sure if that'll come in an app update or not, but uh, that is currently not available to me. And some other behind the scenes stuff that I can't show you, Miracast support, which is uh, basically allows you to take uh, media on your Android device and beam it up to your television if it is a Miracast supported television or if you have an adapter connected to your television. Uh, you don't really see those around a whole lot right now, but it should be rolling out very, very soon so that you'll be able to have like a little Apple TV-esque experience with your uh, Nexus 7 or with your Nexus uh, 4 or with your Nexus 10 or your Galaxy Nexus. Uh, Nexus S and Motorola Zoom need not apply it seems so yeah looks like the run might be over for them but if you have a nexus 7 the fun is just getting started for you so once again this update is going to be rolling out to you very very soon or you can root and flash it if you know how so that's all for me folks until next time i'm jeremy with gadgetel and i'll see you next time